Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, my sister's at it again. She wants more Q&A. So this is Q&A Sister Edition, Special Summer Edition. A lot of questions. Uh, so last week I, I mentioned I'd stay out of the gym. Well, some, some people want to know, well, how about if I wear a mask in the gym? Okay, masks help. Yes, you know, it's if you're going to have to go to the gym, wear a mask. I don't know who can do that, but I, personally, I'm exercising outside or by myself. Uh, okay, so a couple of questions came in some, from some physician viewers. Uh, very good questions. Not that non-physician viewer questions are good too, but this was a good one. Uh, does natural immunity play any role in protection about being reinfected? And the issue was, talk a lot about vaccines, what about natural immunity from being infected? And there was a study in the New England Journal that looked at quantitating sort of waning levels of protection versus a vaccine versus getting naturally infected. And the main thing is it, it wanes in both cases, but actually if you're naturally infected, you have better protection than just two, two doses of the vaccine. However, if you get a booster, it brings it back up to a little bit even better than waning natural immunity. So yes, natural immunity is very important. Doesn't mean you shouldn't get boosted because remember, uh, there's plenty of data showing that Infection plus a booster is better than just being infected alone for protecting you from reinfection. So, but good question. Another good question from a physician was, how important is early diagnosis? So it turns out it's very important because the main reason is early diagnosis allows you to consider treatment, particularly for the elderly. So it's very important. And there was a study in the Annals of Translational Medicine that showed that uh, in a retrospective study, the people did better when they were diagnosed earlier, mainly because they had access to some of the antivirals or other therapeutic interventions. So yes, very important. Okay, more questions. My husband and I were planning to get our fourth boosters this month before our travel plans, but my hus husband just tested positive for COVID. Go figure, that happens all the time. Should he get his first shot as planned or wait a couple of months? I, uh, the usual suggestion is wait for six weeks after having the virus and then get boosted. Uh, the o Omicron variant seems to be changing frequently. Is this unusual in a pandemic? <laughs> Every hundred years, it's unusual. So, you know, this is the weirdest thing we've had. You know, if you look at previous pandemics, this virus just changes a lot. You know, I mentioned this last week or a couple of weeks ago. Instead of being annual changes like we do with the flu, you know, we're, it's four to five months it keeps changing. And so this is a very unusual virus, and it points out why we needed to have a better vaccine strategy than just chasing all the variants. Okay, I have relatives who did not get vaccinated. I assumed at some point it would be safe to be around them again. Is that after the pandemic is officially called over? Well, get rid of those relatives. Don't, don't invite, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, if, if there's no virus in the community, yeah, then you can have them over, but it's gonna be a long time. Just tell them to get vaccinated. Remember I showed some data, if you nudge people enough and family members and you keep them out of the loop, they'll go get vaccinated. But don't give up on that because they, they should just get vaccinated. If you are vaccinated when pregnant, does that uh, protection transfer the baby? Absolutely. So uh, there's a lower incidence of uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, test results in infants who are born to women who are vaccinated in the second or third trimester because antibodies uh, transfer through both in the placenta, good data for that, and also through breast milk. So uh, very, very, the protection, the reason we always look at vaccines for six months to above, six months to five years, is because in the first six months of life, Babies are protected from the antibodies from the mother through either the transfusion while they're you know, in utero or from best breast milk. Here's my favorite, this is Lily's favorite question. Has Lily learned how to sniff, uh, sniff out COVID? No, <laughs> she's really good at finding food. <laughs> Treats she's great at. <laughs> COVID, not so much. Oh man, but you know, we could try it. Uh, I've had some symptoms uh, of COVID, but never tested positive, and I test frequently. Do other viruses have similar symptoms? Absolutely. It's an upper respiratory virus. So a lot of upper respiratory viruses have exactly the same symptoms. And, you know, once we had Omicron instead of Delta and the, the, uh, l the lack of uh, smell and all that stuff went away, it's very similar to other viruses. So, uh, you know, yes, and especially when we all wore masks for, you know, a year and a half, no one was getting the usual upper respiratory infections. Now we're getting them all. And there's been a lot of upper respiratory infections going around, including RSV and, and respiratory and social virus and others. So, but if you're in, if you're in doubt, take a test. Always do, always do a test. Uh, if you had COVID after being vaccinated, do you still need a booster or we have enough immunity? I'd get a booster. It always, never hurts to have more immunity. You know, and there's data, again, there's data 
for there's that there's data for being infected and getting uh, vaccinated. There's not yet data like another booster, but I, I assume the data is the same for would be the same for anybody. So yes, I'd get a, a booster. Uh, if you, a yearly or even twice a year COVID vaccine is required, who will determine what variants <laughs> it will target? Well, it's a combination. The drug companies are developing their own, you know, vaccines, but eventually it goes to the CDC and the FDA. CDC make a, makes a recommendation. FDA makes uh, makes an approval. Uh, any special precautions for children this summer? Beach, swimming pools, water parks. So outdoor activities should be fine. Uh, the only issue is, uh, you know, be sure to get your kid vaccinated if they're eligible. Get them vaccinated. Uh, and, in, you know, unless they're all packed into some weird thing, you know, they should be okay. But outdoor activities are, are very low risk. <laughs> so my sister, because she's a big, you know, film, my sister's a film professor. Do you wear, mirror, do you wear a mask in a movie theater? That's she asked me. Yes. I, and when I was, went to a Broadway show, I wore a mask too. Uh, my husband and I are vaccinated and double boosted. We're going on a trip to Italy next month. What happens if we get COVID there? Uh, have insurance. <laughs> uh, no, so if you get COVID, you know, we're no longer, U.S. Uh, last week stopped uh, testing for return down to the country. But what I would do is wait for five days, if you can, if you can afford it, uh, and then come back. Uh, but, you know, stay isolated for five days. Um, and wear a mask so you don't, you know, expose everybody else. Here's one, is hand sanitizer as effective as hand washing? Uh, actually, hand washing is better. Hand sanitizer should be used when you don't have access to soap and water, but soap and water is better. Can I go back to singing in a choir? This is a good one. We, last week we talked about exercise. Well, singing is a lot like exercise. We're very good at aerosolizing. Remember that first outbreak in Minnesota, that choir in Minnesota? Like a, of the 60 people choir, I thought like a third of them got infected. So, you know, uh, that's a tough one. I think, you know, if the levels are low in your community, yeah, you probably want to go back to being in the choir, but you might ask all the choir members to get tested before they come to, to rehearsal. Because it's there, you know, a lot of asymptomatic spread. You don't want to be the choir that infects everybody. So I just say, like weddings, people ask me what to do in gatherings, just have people tested before they go. Make sure they're all negative. And have someone in charge of that. <laughs> you know, someone's got to be the tally or person. Uh, is it okay to schedule elective procedures at the time? This is a really good question. Absolutely. Yes, you should absolutely, if you've got medical care to be, that needs to happen, ha be sure to do it. Remember, even at the height of the pandemic, uh, there were no, like, once we had universal masking, there was really no outbreaks in the hospital. There were occasional examples of, you know, to, during lunch breaks, a nurse or two doctors got infected. But as long as you're masking, it's very safe to go into, your, uh, into, into a medical uh, community. So... Please don't postpone things you need to have done. Do you think it's okay that the U.S. stop testing people before they return from a foreign country? <laughs> yeah, it makes my life easier because I'm going away. But yes, uh, I'm sure it's fine. We were the last country to have that, and we probably didn't need it. Uh, I'm sure the CDC will review this in, in two or three months, and if we need to go back to testing, we will. But I, I don't think it's necessary right now. Uh, my six-year-old has been vaccinated. Should I wait to get him boosted until just before school starts? I'd go ahead and get him boosted now because the cases are, are going on. Anyway, last question for my sister. She said, did you notice your plant's dead? <laughs> I, 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 was gonna, I hope you didn't notice, Janet. Thanks for telling everybody. I, I, it was, you know, anyway, she's, thanks, Janet. Anyway, have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.